afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Cincinnati Zoom Botanical Garden, and welcome to today's uh, home virtual safari. Uh, today we're at the very spacious indoor gorilla habitat. It's been a little stormy here in Cincinnati today, so we decided to be prepared and let the gorillas be in this dry, warm, uh, giant indoor gorilla habitat. Also prepared today, uh, for today, I cut my hair last night with one of those stay at home, do it yourself kind of haircuts. So I, you feel free to comment on how I look as you go along. I did it myself just last night for today. Uh, more important than that, today is Endangered Species Day. Uh, I think everybody knows what an endangered species is. That just means uh, any plant or animal species that um, has low numbers or a small population in the wild or has a rapidly declining population in the wild. Uh, the Endangered Species Act was passed back in the early 70s to help save some species and there's a lot of great success stories because of that including right here in the United States the uh, bald eagles and the American alligator and black-footed ferrets and the California condor all have came back from the brink of extinction because of the Endangered Species Act. Cincinnati Zoo cares a whole lot about protecting and educating people about endangered species. Um, we do a lot of stuff in the wild or in C2 conservation work with the cheetahs, with Sumatran rhinos. And even here at the zoo, we have a whole facility set up for uh, researching endangered wildlife called CREW, the Center for Research of Endangered Wildlife. They've done a lot of stuff for Sumatran rhinos. There are only about 50 of those left in the wild. So really super critically endangered species and also small cat species they work on, plant species, the African violet, vulnerable polar bear. So a whole lot of great work comes out of the Cincinnati Zoo. Unfortunately, gorillas as well are a critically endangered species. Uh, and there are a couple different types of gorillas. One's a good success story, the mountain gorillas, where they have made a really good comeback from the brink of extinction based on uh, in situ conservation work that people have done. Western lowland gorillas, which are the kind we have in zoos that you're looking at right now, um, are still in a pretty tricky spot because their populations are declining rapidly. So Cincinnati Zoo has been involved with wild gorilla conservation work for over 20 years now in the Republic of Congo. And it's one of the big strongholds left for wild western lowland gorillas. So we're very proud to be associated with that work. Zoos all work cooperatively to help gorillas. We don't buy or sell gorillas. Zoos don't take gorillas from the wild anymore. Everything that goes into what happens to each individual gorilla is done cooperatively among all the AZA zoos in North America to make sure their populations stay strong and to make sure they're here so we can share them with everybody and talk about those important things like um, uh, Endangered Species Day. So I have with me here, my name's Ron Evans, by the way, I'm curator of primates. Today I have with me the head keeper of the gorillas, Ashley Ashcraft and one of our great gorilla keepers, Grace Malloy. Hi. And they will be tickled pink to answer any question you might have and want to throw out there for us. So let the questions commence. The group we have out today, who is this, guys? This is Jomo's group, so this is our family group. This is Jomo's group, so this is our family group. So within this group, we have our adult male, or silverback, which is directly in front of you. And we also have an adult female named Lindsay, and then three younger females, Elle, Mona, and Gladys. They're three sisters, and they're full of trouble all the time. They're, a couple of them are still called juvenile gorillas, and we call them juvenile delinquent gorillas around here because they like to get in trouble all the time with each other. But it's a really cool group. Um, uh, once again, it's a it's a it's our family group that we have here. Elle is the youngest gorilla here that you're kind of looking at right now. Uh, Elle is really uh, significant because she is the 50th gorilla born here at the Cincinnati Zoo. Only a handful of zoos in the world have had 50 gorillas born at their zoo. So once again, we don't take gorillas from the wild. We don't want to do that. Zoos haven't done that in probably 50 years. It's very important that we take care of their genetics here so we can have them once again to share with everybody out there. We're getting a whole tally bunch of questions here. We'll answer them for you shortly. Jomo's about 400 pounds, if that's a question that's gonna pop up. 
Joe must call it a silverback. Silverback's a term for an adult male gorilla. All male gorillas eventually become silverbacks. One question from Clara is how many gorillas do we have? 13. We have 13 gorillas divided in between, 13 gorillas uh, divided between three family groups here. Uh, so they're all co-sexual groups versus bachelor groups, which uh, naturally occur in the wild, and we try to mimic that natural history. So once males kind of get too big for their britches in uh, their uh, natal groups, they'll come out. They'll come out of that natal group, and uh, they'll be put in with some other uh, young males, and they kind of grow up together until they're old enough to uh, lead their own feet, their own family group when they become silverbacks, which is around the age of 15 or so. Lisa wants to know, um, can you talk about how they sleep at night? Do they sleep together as a group or? With their eyes closed. <laughs> um, so these guys are what we consider to be uh, nesters. Uh, so they'll make really big luscious nests at night with any sort of uh, straw or uh, bedding that they're given. Um, and they typically like to sleep around each other, and sometimes you'll see um, others cuddling up with each other as well. One of the cool things we learned about gorillas, too, from our work in the wild is that they sleep the same patterns in zoos as we see them sleeping in the wild. So even though it stays lighter here than it does on the equator, and they all go to bed around 6 in, in the wild, they still all bed down about 7 o'clock here in, in the zoo. And they take these midday naps as well. So they're always digesting the large amount of food that they're eating, so they sleep a lot. And that's just gorillas digesting. Frankie wants to know, do they always all get along? So Frankie, that's a very good question. So gorillas are very social animals, just like people are. So they don't necessarily always get along with each other. But in a family group, the silverback is the leader and protector of the group. So it's his job to sort of mitigate any disagreements that may occur. But for the most part, these guys are pretty chilled animals. So that's kind of what you're seeing right now. They are playing with some, or manipulating some enrichment that we have out here. We have mesh feeders filled with browse, lettuce, bamboo shoots. And so they're really enjoying some of that. Haley asks, do they have any predators in the wild? These guys don't typically have uh, natural predators, maybe some really big cats, but they, they live in such big social groups that it's really not an issue. Um, honestly, kind of the main um, encroachment that they deal with are from humans with habitat destruction and agricultural expansion. Junior asked, how long do they live? So in the wild, these guys live into their 30s. In zoos, they do live a little bit longer because we're able to give them really great health care. So um, rarely into the 50s, rarely into the 60s. So that's pretty old for a gorilla. Elijah wants to know, what's their favorite food? These guys really love vegetation. Um, they love their brows, which is another term that we use for like tree branches and leaves. But honestly, uh, everyone kind of seems to love tomatoes. <laughs> Amanda asked, how much do they weigh? So males can get to 400 to 450 pounds. So like we said earlier, Jomo, the silverback of this group is 400 pounds. Females can get to about 220 pounds max. Cindy asked, what's their best sense? Their sight. These guys have a vision pretty much exactly like ours. It's considered to be trichromatic vision, and it's also considered to be binocular vision. So they're looking, you know, straight ahead, and they have full uh, peripherals and you know three dimensions and everything like that. Joe wants to know which of these gorillas has the most personality. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. They all have some sort of a great personality. Some of them are a little bit more full of themselves than others. Um, but I couldn't tell you one had a greater personality than the other because I think they're all great. <laughs> Marcy wants to know, has Jane Goodall ever been here for a visit? 
Jane Goodall has been here a couple of times over the years for a visit. She's also co-authored a book with Thane Maynard, our director. So Jane Goodall is a very, very good friend of the Cincinnati Zoo. Cora asked, do gorillas ever come in different colors? So this species is the Western Lowland uh, gorilla. So these guys typically are black, but they also have accents of gray um, around like their ears or the crowns of their head. And, then, or, and they'll have red on the crowns of their head at the top. Cynthia wants to know, how is Ndume doing? Ndume's doing quite well. He's got two girlfriends he lives with now. He's doing well uh, with the new keepers. He likes all of his new keepers here a lot. He's learned all the places in this giant facility that we have. We have our two habitats that you see when you visit the zoo, but behind the scenes, there's another three spaces for the gorillas to go in. Some of them are kind of like McDonald's Playland for gorillas back there. So he's learned how to navigate most of those areas, and he's still, you know, warming up to everywhere, just like it happens with the gorillas. They take up their time, but he's doing well. Rebecca wants to know, are gorillas ever scared of thunderstorms? Oh, that's a good question. So these guys, you know, being in the wild, if they're around thunderstorms, they're pretty used to it. Um, and honestly, these guys will go out in thunderstorms as long as it's not too severe. Um, for the most part, they just kind of stay out of the rain or others will love the rain and kind of hang out in the rain like Asha, for example. Um, but for the most part, you know, they're, they're pretty good about storms. We're probably more scared of storms than they are, for sure. Dylan wants to know, why are they endangered? Gorillas are endangered because of a number of reasons. Probably the biggest one is deforestation, where they're cutting down their rainforest habitat throughout Central Africa, where they come from, for timber that goes to all over the world. Goes to Europe, goes to China, comes to the United States sometimes. There's also mineral mining in Africa for things like diamonds, and believe it or not, for a mineral called coltan that you find in your very own cell phone. So if, ever, if you have a cell phone, you probably got a little bit of gorilla habitat in your pocket right now. So that doesn't help the gorillas at all. But uh, a number of things like that contribute to the population decline. The good news, if you want to help us out with conservation work here at the zoo, you can recycle your cell phones with us here at the Cincinnati Zoo. We've been doing this for many years here. In fact, we've recycled more cell phones because of all the great help we get from you guys than any other zoo in North America. So keep up that great work. You can go to our website and read all about our cell phone recycling programs. Or the next time you come to the zoo, you can drop them off right here at Gorilla World because we have a receptacle right across from the gorillas. Great way to help gorilla conservation. Levi wanted to know how many babies do they have at a time? So these guys will typically just have one at a time and occasionally, very rarely, they might have twins as well. Um, sometimes uh, they will both arrive because having twins is a lot more uh, ex energy expenditure and resources to uh, provide for them. Emily wanted to know why was Gladys adopted? Gladys uh, was an orphan gorilla from a zoo in Texas. Sometimes mother gorillas do a really good job and every once in a while a mom gorilla, for whatever reason, doesn't feel up to taking care of her baby. And if that happens, we look for a surrogate mom for, for that baby. We know from experience it's very important that we don't raise gorillas for a long time in human care because we can take care of their physical health needs, but we cannot teach them all the things they need to learn to be a good gorilla. Just like us, the day they're born, they need to start learning what they need to know to get along with other gorillas and to survive. So we make every effort, even if it means sending a gorilla that was born at our zoo to another zoo to be with a surrogate mom there, or a foster mom, we call them. And that's what happened with Gladys. She, they didn't have a good foster mom at the time where she was born. So we all talked about it and worked together. And we brought Gladys here because we did have a potential good foster mom. And through our procedures of reintroducing a baby to, to a mom over about a four month period, we were able to find her mom here, which is Malinzi, one of the female that's out here uh, in this group. And now Gladys is seven years old. So she went, she was, she came to us at one month old. She went in with Malinzi at about four and a half months old. 
and now she's a regular old gorilla at seven years old. She's a sub-adult now. <laughs> Lucy wants to know, why are the males called silverbacks? So that's a great question. So when a little young boy grows up within his group, he's called a blackback. He actually doesn't get that full silver coloring until he is fully mature, so about 15 to 20 years old. Um, so as you see, Jomo being 28, he has that full silver coloring right on cue um, on his back. <laughs> um, so you will see the females and the younger gorillas, they do not have that silver coloring. Every once in a while you'll see an adult female have a little bit lighter coloring, have a little bit of gray here and there, but that full silver coloring will be an adult male. A lot of people are asking, what are they picking up out of the ground and eating? So earlier, uh, did we just threw some snacks in to incorporate with their enrichment, and these are some Cheerios. So they might get some Cheerios, some oats, peanuts, uh, things like that, sunflower seeds too. Hazel wants to know, what does their fur feel like? Is it soft or is it coarse? It's, it's, it's a, not dissimilar from human hair, maybe a little bit coarser than human hair, but it's not really stiff or anything. So, um, little, not dissimilar from human hair, but maybe a little thicker, a little coarser than ours. Sharon wants to know if they're able to swim. So these guys are extremely large primates. Um, so typically they're not really made for swimming. However, in the wild, these guys will go into swamps a lot and wade in the water. So out in our outdoor habitat, we actually have a stream and a moat as well. So we do have individuals that really enjoy playing in the water, but they're really not great swimmers. So if it's um, too deep for them, they most likely will not go in the water. They're actually seen in the wild using long sticks to test the depths of murky water before they cross. Um, so really not great swimmers. And that was actually discovered at one of the places that we support with our NC2 conservation work here at the Cincinnati Zoo that discovered gorillas using a long stick to measure the depth of water before they go in there. And that was the very first documented case of a wild gorilla using a tool. So we know for sure that wild gorillas, we knew they did it in zoos all the time, but it hadn't been documented as much in, in the wild. So one of the cool things that have come out of the NC2 conservation work that the Cincinnati Zoo supports. And that's perfect for our last questions from Devin and he wants to know, are gorillas smart? Gorillas are very smart. They're on the same mental level as about a three or four year old. It's not exactly the same kind of mental level, but because they learn all these different experiences, but extremely smart. They have the same emotions as we do to a certain degrees. Gorillas have a, a complex uh, group of vocalizations, about 13 to 20 different vocalizations and facial expressions and combinations of all three that create a, a complex language that they all have to start learning once again from early on that they can communicate with. So yes, gorillas are uh, very smart animals for sure. So, so yeah, be sure that you go and you look at the activity that is associated with today's um, safari. I think you'll find an opportunity there where you can actually help with gorilla conservation work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys.